So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nick uh, Visas from Proxy SQL. And today, I'm going to present um, the new features and changes in Proxy SQL version 2. Um, so a bit about us, Proxy SQL uh, LLC. Um, we're a small company, a bit smaller than Google. And uh, <laughs> we primarily do Proxy SQL development. Um, but of course, we also provide support services to our um, customers. Um, and uh, also some uh, DBA uh, consulting stuff. We're hiring, so um, if anyone's interested in doing either C development or uh, you know, uh, proxy SQL support, um, please reach out to us. We work 100% remote, um, and we're very flexible with the time and the type of work. Uh, there's, there's a lot you, that you can do at our company, so reach out to us if you're interested. Um, this is an old slide. I'm some companies using Proxy SQL. Um, and let's get started with a specific talk. Um, so in the beginning, I'm going to start off with uh, some performance enhancements that have been added, um, and then go into the features, specifically uh, GTID, causal reads, the extended support we've introduced for uh, Galera and Amazon Aurora. Um, we're going to touch on uh, the LDAP integration that has been implemented and then move over to security kind of stuff, audit logging features that we've introduced, SSL. Um, we've built a lot of things in terms of logging to get information about what all of your connections and what all of your um, processes in your database are, uh, are doing. So, I mean, we've implemented all of that with uh, JSON, so we're going to try and go through that quickly. This is a longer presentation than we have time for today, so I'm going to try and whiz past th some sections. Um, and then finally, um, discuss the, the firewall that's been introduced and SQL uh, injection detection. So performance enhancements. Uh, starting off, we've upgraded a lot of our internal dependencies. Uh, this led to a lot of code changes. Um, we moved to the MariaDB Connector version 3. Uh, we've, uploaded, uh, we've upgraded Gemalock, um, which in itself is faster to version 5.2. And we've uh, also upgraded the SQL Lite and the libconfig. Um, we improved the, the performance of the MySQL uh, refresh variables um, process, let me call it. It's, it's very core because, I mean, this, this takes care of updating all of the uh, stats variables for every single thread that's running and every single process. So um, the changes here really made a big uh, improvement. Um, we also made, well, it was actually a complete overhaul rather than several optimizations for the stat tables. Um, and that goes together with uh, monitor module changes. Um, a lot of code was just completely rewritten. Um, and some, some bugs were were found. Well, they weren't actually bugs. They were performance issues uh, in fast when running proxy SQL and fast forward. So um, those were addressed. Um, and we've also added a variable um, where you can pass through a list of variables uh, that you want to keep multiplexing enabled for. That will make a major performance improvement because you won't have to create individual query rules. Um, you can just group them all together and say, OK, do not disable multiplexing for this list of variables. Um, so that's quite useful. Um, we also introduced some memory optimization specifically on the vacuuming of the uh, internal proxy SQL database and the stat schemas. Um, and we also um, introduced this variable to normalize the digest text so you can actually just um, store a portion of your digest rather than the, the full query, especially when it's a, a bed sheet. <laughs> uh, full double bed <laughs> SQL statement, and you don't want to store that in your database. Um, OK, and Gemalock, which we already discussed. Um, so uh, in the query cache, we've also finally implemented. This was uh, uh, widely requested, uh, just the command so that you can be able to flush your cache. Um, and we also improved the, the cache TTL. Now it actually purges the cache entries rather than handle it as a background process. Previously, it would just. Um, you know, mark that the cache should get emptied at some point. Now it actually gets uh, emptied uh, in real time. Um, and we also have added an option to avoid caching empty result sets, which can create a lot of uh, um, garbage, essentially, in your, in your cache. So uh, GTID causal reads. Um, I'm just going to touch on this uh, feature. I hope everybody has. Is, has anybody here worked with the GTID uh, causal reads in Proxy SQL? Or is familiar with it? OK. Um, 
this is a presentation in itself, but I will just try and uh, give you uh, an overview of uh, the, the feature. Uh, the way it works is we'll set up proxy SQL as we normally do. We also have to deploy an additional component called the bin log reader. What this does is it uh, checks the, the, currently the, the bin logs that are currently being processed on each of the instances and just sends uh, the, the transaction ID. So that's the, the, GT, the identifier for the, for the server and the sequence number for the GTID. So in this way, proxy SQL can track the replication status of every single instance and um, you can you can define um, you can define query rules to ensure that all of your statements that are being executed on the slaves will be accessing a node that has uh, data that is needed for your transaction so I won't say up-to-date data but it will make sure that the data that you're trying to access is up-to-date on the instance um, so the bin log reader itself is a really lightweight process. Um, it just sends um, two numbers for every, for every event. Well, actually, it sends the source ID just once, and then it just sends the sequ sequence ID. So it's lightweight, both in terms of what it's processing and what it's sending. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, network throughput. Um, it's also built with an angel process, so it will stay up and ensure that uh, um, the data is flowing back to the proxy SQL instances. So um, where can we get this? This is in a separate repository to Proxy SQL itself. Um, if you want to download it from the repo, from GitHub repo, you can build it yourself. It's just uh, make and then your platform name. Um, we have actually created packages and we will be releasing these soon. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Um, so um, Galera application. I hope everybody is familiar with Galera. Show of hands. So, so, okay, okay. Um, so I will, I will skip the overview of Galera application and just say <laughs> it's a very nice technology. It's uh, virtually synchronous. Um, Proxy SQL has great support for it. So we've introduced this, a similar table to the one that we used for uh, group replication um, where we can define the, the concepts we need for uh, the clustered um, configuration. So we can define how many writer instances we have. We can define whether our writer instance is also going to be used as a reader. Um, we can define a threshold for how many transactions behind we can let a node be before considering it offline. And then we also have the option for the backup writer host group, which is essentially similar to the, the backup option in HA proxy. You can have instances just uh, on like a warm standby in case you lose your master. So that's what the table uh, looks like inside Proxy SQL. Uh, you'll need to define four different host groups, one for your writer, one for your backup writer. This can obviously be an empty host group if you don't want to have a backup writer. Um, and you also have to define your reader, your reader host group. The offline host group is a special host group that Proxy SQL will use itself. When it detects a node is offline, it will move it into the offline host group, keeping only the active nodes in the writer and reader host groups. Um, <coughs> So you can also define which instances you have active in case you haven't have an instance that you haven't launched yet or you've taken down for um, whatever reasons. Um, again, these are the settings we discussed before about configuring your max writers and whether the writer should also be used as a reader. Um, separate health checks have been introduced. Um, these check the, the, the WS rep variables to determine um, the status of a node. Um, here obviously you can set the interval, the timeout, and the max timeout count for each of the checks. Um, by default, we've left the, the amount number of checks to three. You might want to tune this according to the needs of your environment. Um, there's also a new variable, Pocona Extra, this is specifically for Pocona Extra DB cluster, um, PXC main mode. So if you set this variable on the PXC node, um, Proxy X SQL will pick up on the change and set the node to offline soft so that no traffic will be routed to it. Uh, Amazon Aurora. Um, so we've added a lot of support for Amazon Aurora in version 2. Um, the way it works is it will track the replica host status table, which contains, contains the replication information about your Aurora cluster. It supports uh, auto-discovery to a certain level. You still need to define your reader and writer host groups, but 
it's enough to just specify one node and ProxySQL will connect to that instance and based on the information it collects, it will build your topology. Um, so it has native, so it has uh, auto discovery, it has AZ awareness, and you can even set uh, replication lag granularity to um, milliseconds. We have a similar table to the one for Galera cluster as well, but we have, I don't know if you can see these clearly, there's some new uh, Aurora specific variables. For instance, your Aurora port, your domain name, um, the new reader weight variable, um, these are all documented on, on the GitHub wiki, so if you want to have a look at uh, what each one does. Um, the main variables to keep in mind are max lag millisecond, which is how, many, how much milliseconds we'll, we can tolerate to uh, keep a node active, and um, the check timeout and interval. Um, the rest are similar to a regular uh, group replication or Galera cluster configuration. Um, we also have a logging table where we keep all of the statistics of you know how many checks failed, uh, the reasons for their for their failures, and this is where you can track the monitoring. It basically takes all of the information it finds in Aurora and also persists it in ProxySQL. Okay, um, and then the last thing that I want to touch on here is we also give an option where you can directly in your select statement uh, specify how much. Uh, how many milliseconds of delay are okay for a query in case you have some query that needs to be more up to date and it will go and it will find an instance that has the most up to date data for you. Um, just to note, it's not the exact measured lag, but it's kind of an esti estimate uh, because you can't know the exact amount of lag from the time um, the connection was initialized. So this is the, the lag that ProxySQL at least knows about. But um, it's highly granular and very accurate. Um, so again, we have the option to use the writer as a reader, um, and we can we can also set this variable to only uh, only read from replicas. Okay. So LDAP, I don't want to talk about this too much <laughs> because the implementation is um, still rudimentary, um, but there's uh, going to be a lot of active development uh, on LDAP in the next uh, few months. Um, the way it works is a client will collect, connect to ProxySQL and try and authenticate. If ProxySQL doesn't find those credentials within its own list of uh, users, it will connect to LDAP um, and it will try to authenticate. Uh, it, will, it, it will check multiple groups. It will try to find that user. If it finds map cr credentials, it will allow the user to authenticate. Um, it's available as a separate plugin. Um, it's not on the website. Uh, it will be released at some point, but it still needs to be uh, brushed up a bit. You can see um, the variables related to LDAP. It's pretty simple to use. You just have to um, specify your, your prefixes, your suff suffixes, or your URI, and make sure you have access, and you can start using this. So. Um, SSL support, we've uh, implemented not only back-end, but also front-end support uh, for SSL in ProxySQL version 2. Um, to configure it, you just have to set have SSL true, and then ProxySQL will automatically generate your certificates. If you want to use your own ones, you just have to create them with these specific names in the um, ProxySQL data directory. Um, you can verify uh, your front-end connection just by checking the, the status. Um, and then you can also see that in ProxySQL admin. So um, there's two points where you, you would want to verify your connections. The impact, um, as you can see here, there's a higher impact when there's a lower number of threads. But as the threads increase, because ProxySQL reuses back-end connections, there's not a huge impact. I mean, it's almost... Uh, um, it's almost comparable with just the back-end SSL. Um, also, uh, you'll see reduced latency as the, as the connections get prepared in the connection pool, and uh, once they're ready, uh, you won't even see the difference. Um, audit log is a new feature that was sponsored in ProxySQL 2.0. Um, this allows you to track uh, events both for uh, the MySQL module and for the admin module. So you can track successful, failed authentications, graceful connects, close connections, change of schemas uh, within MySQL 
and also you can see what's being um, changed within uh, proxy SQL admin. So just an example of what these logs look like. Um, it's all in JSON, so you can see the type of error or the type of message, connect OK. You can see if you've got SSL. So this is uh, a good way to be able to log all activities that are happening in uh, proxy SQL. Uh, additionally, uh, when we improved the general log, which was previously a mm, strange custom format. Now we've uh, migrated that to use JSON. So uh, if you, in order to enable the events log, you just have to specify the file and uh, that will start producing events which look kind of like this. I don't know if it's a bit small, but here you can see a select statement was executed and then it shows you the type of query and it shows the host group idea, ID. Here we can see host group ID minus one. So this was actually uh, served from cache, whereas this went to host group one. I think, no, host group zero. Um, so it's a very nice way to see what's going on in proxy SQL. This is, think of it as the equivalent to the slow or general log in MySQL. Very useful, it should be, always be on in, in a development environment so that you can see what's going on. Um, did a lot of uh, implementation here on uh, uh, exporting stats in JSON, specifically uh, the process list and the free connections. Okay, that's a lot of information because you have to consider that for every connection in Proxy SQL, um, you have information about the front end side of the connection, the back end side of the connection. These connections could be changing. There's a whole stack, and there's a whole lot of reusing, so it's very difficult to track all this. Um, and it also results in a lot of information. Um, so in order to sift through this, you can use JSON extract in Proxy SQL admin. This is, <laughs> this is what the information looks like for a thread ID zero, okay? Uh, don't worry, keep calm and love JSON. <laughs> if you beautify this, <laughs> And you break it down and dissect it. What we can see here, it's a bit small. Here we have uh, backends, the client, and the connection. So um, you can get information about what's happening on your backend. Very useful information. For instance, if multiplexing is disabled, if auto commit was true, if uh, you know what the last auto commit sent was, and within MySQL here, you can even see the statements that you're executing. Um, whether it's a prepared statement, you can see exactly what's going on. But of course, it's a lot of information. Um, it's difficult to, to sort through unless you know exactly um, what you want to get, but we wanted to keep it explicit so that we could have a, a, an easier path to diagnosing issues. Um, so here we can see the connection elements. You can see what char sets being used. You can see if uh, binary logging is enabled. It's a complete uh, log of everything going inside, uh, going on in your processes. And here we can see an example of what free connections looks like. This is a, a much... Uh, more contained view of data. It's um, most of the information you would get from your stats MySQL connection pool table, um, as well as some other system stuff. Here you can see uh, affected rows, uh, the character set, um, some systemic information, you know, packet size, um, and some MySQL info. So if you want to get this information in a clear form, it's best to use JSON extract and just get exactly what you're interested in uh, getting. Um, Okay, we still have some time. So, so I'm, I'm quickly going to go through this. Okay, we've introduced a, a, a firewall. Uh, we use the whitelist approach. Previously, you'd use a query rule to block users. Uh, instead, we've allowed a, a whitelist where you can specify either users um, or schemas, and you can you can set it, set it up in one of three modes, either off completely detecting so that you can track what's going through, and finally protecting. So think of this kind of like as SE Linux for proxy SQL. Um, we also keep a, a track of all of the traffic um, that goes through. So um, it's useful to have statistics on that as well. Uh, finally, we've also added a library for SQL injection. It does work. Uh, it does give a lot of false positives because it's very picky. Um, if you're interested, you can, you can have a look at how it works. Uh, um, by enabling it, you'll see messages in your error log about how, uh, whether there are dangerous statements being uh, executed. And finally, just to add on this, because it was an issue with the initial releases, we have got full support for MySQL 8 uh, authentication mechanisms. So thank you very much. We have 30 seconds for questions. <laughs> <laughs> you can handle them afterwards.